Today I'm going to be showing you how to create one of these origami bowls using one single sheet of clay slab. It's a relatively simple yet elegant project that beginning students absolutely love to do. The project usually begins with a design process. The design process begins by giving a student a choice whether to create it out of a square, trapezoid, octagon, hexagon, or even a triangle. I hesitate too much with giving students a circle to do because most of the products after assembly with circles tend to look like a traditional looking bowl. So today I'm going to be using a square that I've cut, as you can see, at an angle off center. So if students are using traditional shapes like this, it might help to ask students to draw a circle right in the middle, about three inches. That circle represents a no cut line. So the lines or the cuts they make must not break that border, simply because the circle is what determines the size of their base. The smaller the circle or the deeper the cut, the smaller the base. And now you have to figure out stability. So for today's demo, I'm going to start with this square. I have pre-cut this piece off-centered so it leaves these little arms for me to fold. The great thing about paper is that students can reassemble and assemble them to whatever shape they want. This one in particular I plan to do this way. So the piece of paper is actually quite close to assembling just like the slab. So the piece of paper can be can determine the intricacy of assembly prior to even touching clay. The project begins with a slab that's been pre-rolled to about one quarter inch thick. This thickness is absolutely great to work with since it is light enough to pick up and it resembles a traditional thickness of a bowl. The first thing I do is remove all the canvas textures on the piece. The tool that I use is a straight rib that's flexible. Caution kids by applying too much pressure to the slab, preventing warping of the sheet. Do the back. Note how little material was removed from the sheet. It doesn't require much pressure, as you can see. After the slab is cleaned, you may now begin the cutting process. So this piece, once again, is a square that's going to be cut in four different sides. Always use a ruler to make sure your cuts are straight. From here, I suggest placing the clay into a piece of board. From the piece of board, you may begin cutting out the cuts. I always use a ruler, and I start from the middle to the outside.
At this point, tell students not to lift the little arms to determine how they fit. Go back and tell them to use their sheet of paper to determine how their pieces can fit. In this case, they could say the arm can fit over the body, giving yourself a more geometric look, or it could fit behind the body, giving it a cleaner look. It's up to them how to configure. So in this case, I find that over the body will be for me. So if this arm is going to go over this body, it's the body that's going to have the scored marks. I always like to sketch it out so I don't get confused once I begin the construction process. I mark where I will be scoring. Using a scoring rib, make sure you score it deep and thoroughly. I always like to score more than I need to ensure a bond between the pieces. Now, now we need to do the other side. Avoid picking up the piece of clay by hand. Use another sheet of board, turn it upside down so there's no stress on the clay. As you can see, bending the clay back and forth to determine where it goes breaks quite easily. Once again, I'm going to be marking where the areas are going to be scored. In this case, it's the arm. If you forget somehow where on the other side is scored, it should be, you should be able to feel the scored area and then determine it's the opposite. Once again, score thoroughly. Reverse once again, and now you're ready to assemble. Using slip ensures a bond between the pieces. Spread thoroughly without blending out the scored areas. Now you're ready to begin. I will take one arm and fold over the other. Make sure that you press firmly, but not enough that it leaves dents on the surface. After all four sides are connected, revisit all of your work, ensuring that there's enough pressure of all the pieces are bonded together. From here, I've created a tool using popsicle sticks cut to an angle and curved in the end so it can actually get in that crevice and help me clean without losing my beautiful edges. The cleaning process will take a while, but be careful as the clay has re-softened because of the slip.
This can be done all over as quickly or as carefully as students want. It's important that all the edges are kept nice and crisp. As you can see, it cleans out excess slip as well. At this point, students can flip the piece over a glass or a piece of glazed bottle and the back can be cleaned carefully. Notice where my left hand is. It's compensating for the pressure that the outside is creating. Remind students to take their time during the cleaning process. Too much pressure downward will change the shape. At this point, after a cleanup, the last thing I tell students is to make sure the piece does not wobble. One way to take away a, bobble, a wobble effect is to apply pressure using their thumb onto the surface. This is a good amount of pressure, but not enough that it leaves a dent. This will flatten out the bottom of the piece, giving you stability. Now you've just created your very first origami piece. Let's quickly review. Here is our paper model prior to construction. Notice how close we were to our final product. And here is an example of what a finished piece will look like. Some other examples that students have done are here. As you can see, they got creative with the corners or edges. This one particularly created curves. I love how the glaze flows into the middle. Not everything has to be complex in terms of cuts. Here is a hexagon only cut on two sides. Here's an octagon cut on four sides, but this time you use a little curve in the end using a compass. This one is a rectangle cut only on the edges with just two. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you can follow more examples on my Instagram account, Mr. P Ceramics. Thanks a lot and good luck.